Hello friends, it's me, Ricky Locke, and welcome to another episode of Unlocked, the podcast to help inspire success in your business and to learn how to live the best version of yourself. Before the episode starts, I have a really exciting announcement for you. On November the 4th, I'm hosting my podcast, Unlocked, live, and you can be in the audience. I've teamed up with two incredible people, John Bartler and Sarah Rudder from Field Trip, and we're going to be hosting a live panel discussion with my podcast, Unlocked, about peak performance. Joining me on the panel will be two amazing guests. We have Chris Mooney from Chris Mooney Learning, who will also be on the podcast as a solo episode coming out soon. And we have the amazing Steph Jevons, who is the first Brit to circumnavigate the globe on a motorcycle. And we will be talking about what does peak performance mean to you? It's going to be really exciting and I can't wait for the episode. If you do want to take part and join the live audience, fill some questions and listen in and join that podcast live, then head to the details in the show notes to find out more. Field Trip is a fantastic virtual online session that helps and support learners and individuals who are like-minded who love adventures. If you want an opportunity to step away from your normal environment and immerse yourself in new experiences, then this is the place to be. For fans of the podcast, you will remember Sarah Rudder from episode two when we talked all about mental toughness. So you know that Field Trip is going to be a great event. Head to the show details to find out more. All right, so this week's episode, I want to talk about the idea that not everyone is going to like you. For many of you out there who run a business, you may be producing content such as videos, live streams, imagery, photography, whatever it might be, there may well be a point where you will receive a negative numpty who just doesn't like what you do. And so they want to comment and they want to tell you. Now, don't worry, I get this all the time, and I'm sure I probably piss so many people off with my content. Um, If you ever watch me on lives or anything on videos, I gesticulate quite a lot. I'm animated, and I probably piss people off even with this podcast, right? But that doesn't matter, and I'm going to explain to you why. Now, to explain this really clearly, I'm going to share a wonderful story with you. A couple of years ago, I was asked to run a training session for junior members of management and the content was all about change management. This management team was going through a really heavy change in their structure and in their business and I was tasked to then help them lead through that change to lead all of their colleagues and all those feelings of uncertainty and change and to help them take some development away to then bring it back into their business. The session was six hours, so it was 10 till four, so it was a really heavy content day. And I was there and I would wrote the content. I was passionate about it. Me and the team had put a lot of effort into making this content really, really great. And we were really passionate about this having an impact into these members of management's careers. And at the start, I did notice as people started to come in that there was two individuals that were quite disruptive. and They looked like they didn't really want to be there, but I welcomed them. I greeted them and I started the session. Anyway, as I started to go through the session, 10 minutes in, I'm putting up the content about all the things that they're going to learn today all of that personal development, all of the tips and the tricks that they're going to learn to then bring back into their own business and then to start help their colleagues lead through change. After about 10 minutes, someone puts their hand up and they say this to me. Ricky, if I'd have known that today's session was all about personal development, I wouldn't have come. Now, at this point, there's two ways that you could respond to this. I know what some of you might be thinking, right? So let's explain this. Now, at this point, there are two responses that you can have. The first response was my chimp was kicking off. So that limbic part of my brain, the emotive part of the brain, really wanted to tell them to F off, right? I was immersed into this. I wrote the content. I was really passionate about it. And I believe that this could work. And I was so passionate about it. I loved delivering this content. So at that point, my chimp's thinking, they've offended you, Ricky. They've just told you they don't want to be here. They don't like it. It's crap. You need to tell them to F off right now, right? No, I didn't. (laughs) I wish I could have said that. But at this point, I took the second response, which was the rational part. Now, clearly there was some misunderstanding, whether it was contracting about explaining what the session was about, something down the line. But all I did was reply in a rational kind of way with sarcasm. And I said, oh, okay, Uh, well, that's fine. No problem. Look, if you don't want to be here, the door is there. Please feel free to go. Now, at that point, they were challenged. Uh, Everyone went quiet in the room and they didn't go. They just stayed, right? And I thought, okay, well, that's probably it. They'll they'll be normal, right? Anyway, we carried on and uh, you could clearly see that they didn't want to be there. They were praying about on their phones and they were disrupting the session. And you could clearly see that it was affecting the other learners in the room as well. 
It turns out that they were actually family, so they were brother and sister, I think. And at this point, I thought, right, I'm going to call this out. It's not fair to the other learners, right? So about an hour later, they were disruptive again. And uh, I just thought, right, I'm going to call this out. So I said to them, oh, um, are you enjoying the session? And uh, they went, yeah, yeah, it's really good. We're really liking it. It's really, really fun. And I could tell from that sarcasm. Now, let's just explain here. These are not people like who are 12 or 13. These are people that are in their late 20s, right? So this is really embarrassing, especially for the rest of their team in that room. So I replied in a sarcasm way again, not emotional, but just in a rational, calm way. And I said, oh, OK, no worries. I thought it looked like you were enjoying yourself. But look, hey, if you don't want to be here, then I don't want you here either. The door is there. Please feel free to leave. Guess what? They didn't. Because then I also said to them, oh, by the way, yeah, you can also explain to your manager why you've come back to the store nice and early. <laughs> they obviously didn't move. They carried on, right? Now, here's the thing. At the end of the session, everyone else, the, all of the other learners came up to me and said, oh, thank you, Ricky, for dealing with that. They were really embarrassing. They're very disruptive. But I still had a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Now, at the end of the day, I thought, right, I've got to tell someone about this. I'm pissed off. I need to vent about this. So what do I do? I ring some of my colleagues on the way home. Now, these colleagues are the TDIY team that I've mentioned in previous episodes. I love these people. We all wrote the content. We're all passionate about it. And I seek those people to stroke my ego to make me feel good again. And I remember having a great conversation with a great pal of mine, Paul Dams. Paul, if you're listening, I love you, buddy. And I told Paul about these bloody idiots. And I won't say what I wanted to say uh, to Paul about these disruptive people. They're horrible people. This is what they did. Anyway, oh, my God, no way, Ricky. Well, look, Ricky, don't, don't let it get you down. You're a wonderful person. You're a great human being. Don't worry about it. You're a great trainer. Forget it. Don't let them bring you down. And I thought, oh, brilliant. Yeah, thanks, Paul. You know, and it was great. And all of the team did that. They all made me feel great. And, you know, back onto my uh, top of the service feeling wonderful again. Right. Anyway, I then ring my fiance, who to give a little bit of context here, me and Danielle, we're complete opposites. I'm extroverted. She's introverted, but it's perfect. It works really, really well. And she is what I would call as the kite in the string. I'll explain this to you. I told her about this session, about these horrible people. Danielle, they disrupted the session. I hated it. Hated it. And then she said to me, rather than stroking my ego, she said, Ricky, not everybody is going to like you. Now, at this point, I thought, what? And then when I actually had time to, once I finished the phone call and reflect, I thought, she's absolutely right. So our relationship is like the kite and the string. I'm the kite that floats up in the air, this big blue sky thinking, creative person. And she's the string that brings me back down to earth. She keeps me grounded. She tells me when things aren't great. And she gives me that honest feedback where some people like your friends and family will tell you that feedback that you really want to hear. She tells me the feedback I don't want to hear, but it helps me progress. Now, she's not a horrible person, so don't take that away from this. But she really does help me develop and she keeps me grounded. And it works so well together. But she's absolutely right. We aren't going to please everyone in our business. Not everyone is going to like our content. But there will be some time where you will get a comment or someone will say something about your business and it might annoy you and it might piss you off. To give you a bit of a context here, think about this. If you were to go grab a packet of crisps now from the shop, me, I would personally buy a pack of frazzles or it could be salt and vinegar discos. Now, some of the listeners out there might go, that's disgusting. Frazzles. Ugh. And if you used to challenge me on it, we'd probably have an argument about it because I love frazzles, right? Now, this is exactly what's going on here. It's just a preference. I like crisps. Uh, if you were to say, Ricky, would you like some prawn cocktail? I'd be like, no, can't stand them. Absolutely hate the smell of it. It stinks. I could smell it from a mile off. And we could probably engage in that conversation, but it's exactly the same thing. I don't like a certain packet of crisps. Same as you listen to this podcast right now. You might not like a certain packet of crisps that I like. We're human beings. We all like different things. We all have different preferences and not everyone is going to like everything that we do. For those who make video content, I know a lot of listeners here bought into my ebook, which was how to create amazing videos with a smartphone, you probably create content on YouTube or even on Instagram and live streams and that kind of thing. And I've had this for years. There's a video of mine out on YouTube, which is me hypnotizing someone. Legally, I'm not allowed to show the induction at the start in case people fall asleep at their computers or at their TVs at home. So it's literally right into the middle of the video where I start the video and it's me hypnotizing someone to forget their name. I've got loads of comments on that actual video that says, this is fake, rubbish. Now, I would have years and years ago responded to that in a motive way going, F off. 
hang on, piss off, you know, this is my, I, you know, I know it's right, this is real, I, I, this is mine, you know, I, no, don't tell me that, don't give me these horrible comments. But that's fine. That content is just not for that person, that's fine. But the thing is here, we shouldn't be getting wrapped up into that bad energy and getting caught into it. What do I do to those comments? I just respond and say, hey, thanks for your comment, I really appreciate it, smiley face. <laughs> and um, probably don't go antagonize people, but they can't respond to that. They just generally don't have any idea of going, oh, because they're looking probably for some engagement or maybe for a fight. But if you kill them with kindness, it just works. Now, here's a really cool bonus thing as well. If they do respond further, it's perfect for the algorithm. <laughs> that will tell YouTube that your video is getting a lot of engagement and a lot of comments. Now, please don't go out there just to go chase after those haters and stuff like that. But it, it did work quite well because that video has now been seen like 7,000 times. But it doesn't matter. I knew in my heart that that content was real. Um, I'd worked hard for it. I've been learning that craft for many, many years. And I was really passionate about that video. They might not have liked it. And so what? It doesn't matter. Not everyone is going to like you. Friend of the podcast, Chris Mooney, who will be coming up soon on a solo episode and will be uh, joining my panel at the field trip next week. He also had a similar example of this recently where someone put a really horrible comment about his content and he responded in the best perfect way. And how he responded to that was brilliantly. He didn't get caught up into that toxic energy. He actually chose to respond in a really great way that made his content absolutely brilliant. He created a piece of content around it and it pretty much spread like viral, which was brilliant. So well done to you, Chris. Sometimes when these things happen, we forget about all of the good comments and all of the nice things that people say. In those 7,000 views that I've had on that video, just one person has said that they didn't like it. It was rubbish. That's one view out of 7,000 people. But this is standard. This is what happens for us as human beings. We do something called deletion. Deletion is basically where your brain focuses on that negative comment and forgets all of the 6,999 views that people liked it and commented on it. And we get hung up on it. Now, here's a great thing. You have to let go if you want to grow. We cannot please everyone. I know that I certainly probably piss people off with the way that I'm animated and I gesticulate, but that's fine. If someone wants to leave a bad comment, that says more about them than it does about me. I'm not going to get caught up in that. They're probably not my ideal client. They're probably not my target audience. So why would I waste my energy on them? Every second that you spend thinking about someone else is a second that you could be spending on yourself. Not everybody is going to like you. Don't waste your energy on it move on and do the things that you love and you love to create and that you enjoy doing. Don't get wrapped out into it. We can't please everyone just like frazzles are the best crisps ever. <laughs>so there we go in this short episode this is what i want to share with you for people producing content in your business right now or even pivoting your business for moving online you're probably going to find at some point that people won't like what you're doing they'll probably get fed up of hearing about you but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day as long as you're doing what you love doing and you enjoy it and you are creating some sort of value to people and they like it and they tell you then that's great we're not going to please everyone so don't waste your time on those people that don't like your content Every second you spend thinking about them is a second you can be spending on yourself. As always, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, then head over to the Apple Podcast, leave me a rating and leave me a review. Just tell me what you thought of the episode. It will really help out. Once again, thank you so much. And I can't wait to join you on the next episode of Unlocked.